Hey everyone, in this video we're going to continue looking at our, our series on short Latin stories. Now this one is called Foolish Servants, and it comes from H.J. Hardy's reader um, that he aimed at what he calls the lower forms uh, in schools. Um, I wouldn't call it a beginner text. Again, I'd probably say it's somewhere more useful for like an intermediate level, maybe a Latin two or three, depending on what, um, you know, kind of what curriculum you follow. In terms of my class, I can tell you I would probably give this to my Latin, maybe Latin two, Latin three students. Um, so it kind of depends on where you are. Some of these stories have things like subjunctive. Um, you might find like a gerund mix in there. So it kind of depends on what you've seen, but they're still worth trying on no matter what level of Latin you're at. They're fun. They're pretty straightforward. Um, there's not a lot to them. They're very kind of short and sweet. And a lot of them have either uh, historical themes, you know, pick up on real events, or they're meant to be kind of witty or clever with, with sort of a message, um, you know, attached to the end of it. So like I always tell you when you're reading through these, what you want to probably do, um, no matter what you do in Latin, do that read and reread method. So if you can read it, um, mark anywhere you're struggling, look all that up and then go back and keep reading it. Um, that would be a really good idea. And the idea is you should be able to read this story without living in a dictionary or constantly looking up grammar. If you can do that, read it and understand it, you know, you're in a pretty good place. Now, if you want some resources on this, um, you can find this on my Nova Latin site. Um, you can find all of Hardy's stories. And I'll add as we go um, the vocab for you so you don't have to constantly look it up. Um, you can use this video to try to get some grammar tips as well. But there's other things there for you that should uh, should kind of help you out. So the structure of this video, um, what I'm going to do to start is read the entire thing in Latin. Then I'll pause the video, right? It'll tell you to pause the video. And the idea is um, this will give you a chance to kind of work on your listening skills, hearing me read it to you. If you want to then follow along on my translation, that's fine. If you want to pause the video and kind of translate it on your own and then come back to see if your translation was good, there's a bunch of different ways you could use it. Just use, you know, use this video in whatever way you see fit and whatever kind of works best for you. So with that being said, we're going to start right now and dive in um, by reading the story aloud. I'll read through it once and then I'll pause the video and we'll kind of unpack it. So the story goes like this. You have mulier widua, quae texendo vitam sustentaba. Solebat anquila suas de nocte excitare ad opus, cum primum gali cantum audivisse. At ilai diuturno labore fatigatae statuerunt gallum interficere. Quo facto deteriore condicione quam prius esse coiperunt. Nam domina de ora noctis incerta, nuc famula saipe iam prima nocte excitaba. So we're going to pause the video right there. And again, if you want to practice, feel free to go back, read it on your own, listen to it a couple of times. Um, but when we move forward now, you probably want to have tried to read this at least a few times so that you can check that your translation matches mine. As long as you're on the right track or as it makes you know pretty good sense to you, you should be fine. So going back, the story started with the, the phrase mulier widua. So a mulier is a woman, right? That's our subject. The mulier widua. Um, widua just means widowed, right? Someone who, who is a widow, you might say. So a widowed woman is kind of that, that first um, first part. Then you have the relative um, pronoun here. You have quai, who, right? Who sustentabat, who was sustaining, you might say, sustaining her witam, her life. Um, it means kind of like supporting herself is kind of what it is. Um, texendo, by weaving right? This is from the verb to weave. So she sustained herself through weaving, okay? So Lebat, she was accustomed to um, excitare, to wake up, right? Now, excitare doesn't mean you're waking yourself up. It really means waking someone else up. So she was accustomed, or she usually would, you might say, um, to waking up the ankila suas, her own slave women, right? And ankila is a slave woman. So she was accustomed to waking up her slave woman, de nocte, right? In the middle of the night, right? At night. OK, so she was accustomed to waking them up at night um, for working ad opus. Right. And kind of waking her up so that they, they could work. Right. Bring them to work. So she would wake them up uh, from the night, you might say. Maybe it's a better way to do it um, because it was time to work. Then you have cum primum gali cantum audiwisse. So when would she do this? She would do this when she first had heard. Right. So you have a cum clause here, which is why you have audiwisse, which is perfect um, subjunctive. So it's saying when she had heard the cantum gali. Um, when she had first heard the song, it literally means like the song of the rooster. You might say the crowing of the rooster, right? So it's saying again that she wakes them up from from sleep, basically from the night, nocte, right? Um, when she heard the rooster and she gets them to work, right? Ad opus for the purpose of working. So the idea is she would wake them up at first light and it's time to work, okay? And she does this when uh, when she hears the rooster, okay? 
Then you have at Eli, but they, meaning the slave women, right? So it's feminine plural, so you're talking about um, the slaves. They're described as fatigati, exhausted, tired, fatigued, right? All means the same thing. So um, tired, or you might say having been exhausted, um, diuterna labore, from the, um, the, the labor, the diuterna means like the long or kind of unending labor, the long labor, you might say, right? So tired from the, the long labor, they start to wear out. Now, this doesn't mean they like stood. It means they decided, right? So the, 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 ver the, the way you want to translate this, um, this verb is to, to think of like a, a decision-making verb, right? So they decided to do what? We need a complementary infinitive, interficere gallum, to kill the rooster. So the idea is the old woman, I'm assuming she's old. I'm not entirely sure. The widowed woman, she's always waking her slaves up right at the sort of crack of dawn here with the rooster so they can get up and work. So since they're always tired, they decide the solution is to to, to murder the rooster, right? They're going to kill the chicken. Then you have quo facto deteriore condicione, right? So you're saying with this having been done, meaning after they, uh, you know, they, they killed the rooster, right? They began, um, the, the coiper on here is they began. So it's they began to be in a deteriore condicione, in a worse, literally it's where you get the word like deteriorating, deteriore. So in a, in a worse, it's comparative, a worse condition, um, quam, prima, uh, quam prius than before. Right. So this is a, a comparative. Right. You have deteriore. The IOR is telling you it's, it's comparative. So the qualm is saying like more uh, more worse. You might say worser than before. Quam prius. Right. So they kill the chicken. They think or not the chicken, the rooster. And they think they're all set and they're actually in a worse place. Why? And here's so sort of the moral of the story, because nam right for the domina, the mistress. Right. Now she's described as incerta, uncertain of the ora noctis, the hour of the night. So now she doesn't know what time it is. So uncertain of the hour of the night, she now ex -kitaba, she now was waking up the famulas. Now famulas is a, like an alternative of ankylos. It means servants, right? Slaves. So she was waking up the, the servants, you might say, often, saipe, um, and now she's waking him up prima nocte, kind of in the first part of the night, you might translate this, at the first of the night. So what it's saying here is she used to wake him up uh, right at dawn, right when night was over, and now she doesn't know what time it is, so she wakes him up in the middle of the night to work, okay? So it's got that sort of moral uh, element to it, almost like a fable, right? Be careful what you wish for. Um, they thought their life was hard waking up at dawn, and now they're being woke up in the middle of the night because they killed the rooster. OK, so, again, it's a fun little story with a little bit of, uh, again, a, a message to it. Hopefully the Latin wasn't too, too crazy um, and you're able to understand it. But again, if you didn't, feel free to try, like I said, read and reread. Try to practice your vocab, your grammar, and you should be OK. But if you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. Um, I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, keep practicing and hopefully you're enjoying these short little stories. Again, it's just a break to get away from your normal curriculum. Good luck.